Hi, I'm attorney Gregory Dell, and I'm here with attorney Stephen Jessup, and we want to discuss Lincoln Financial and Liberty Mutual disability lawsuits. Now, you're wondering why am I saying Lincoln Financial and Liberty Mutual, and the reason for that is because Lincoln Financial recently, and I believe 2019, end of 2018, um, was acquired by the Lincoln Financial Insurance Company. So that was a super interesting merger and we've discussed in other videos the impacts of that, but now we're gonna talk about and focus on this video on what should a person expect when a lawsuit needs to be filed due to a disability denial against Lincoln Financial. And I'm not gonna flip back and forth mm -hmm. between Lincoln Financial and Liberty because now it's all under the umbrella of Lincoln Financial, so we'll focus on Lincoln Financial, although we're still seeing the culture shake out between the two different companies. And Steve, you can dive right into that because it's not always the same if we get a former Liberty person on a claim versus a Lincoln claim. And where are you seeing that differential? Uh, you know, I think there's there hasn't been as smooth an integration between Lincoln and Liberty as say there was with Hartford and Aetna. It seemed to have kind of meshed better. Um, I know for sure that former Liberty in-house attorneys are still handling, handling those Liberty cases and link in the same way. So it, it's, it's even the claims processing, you know, Liberty, by the way, they've changed the name officially from the Liberty Life Assurance Company of Boston to the Lincoln Life Assurance Company of Boston. Uh, but under those policies, for instance, they, they require one level of appeal, and that's all you get before filing of a lawsuit. Lincoln requires two levels of appeal before filing a lawsuit. So just in those differences, they've kind of still compartmentalized and kept a lot of the claims people and the way that they handle the reviews of the cases separate, almost as if they did before they ever merged. So there isn't a, uh, you know, a smooth merger between the two companies, at least from what I'm experiencing. Okay, let's dive right into when dealing with a Lincoln financial disability lawsuit. What do you feel is the single biggest challenge that a claimant has to deal with? I think the biggest aspect will be, like we've discussed, these policies, if it has a discretionary clause which imbues uh, Lincoln with the ability to review your claim and have it in law and litigation under this idea of an arbitrary and capricious review, which means they don't have to show that they made the right call, just that it was reasonable, their, their uh, basis of denial. That's the, the crux of it. Lincoln with that requirement of two levels of appeal, and since the second appeal is mandatory, so if they deny your first appeal, you have to file a second before you can bring a lawsuit. Since it's a mandatory appeal, Lincoln will then turn all your information over to another set of eyes, new claims people, new doctors. So when they deny your case originally, it's one set of doctors and claims people. The second denial of an appeal, your uh, denial of your first appeal, you have a second set. And if you find yourself in litigation, that means they've had three sets of doctors and claims people, vocational people, look at your file to determine you're not disabled. It gets really difficult to establish they didn't have a reasonable basis to deny the claim when they now have, you know, sometimes upwards of six to ten different doctors having looked at the file, and then Lincoln relies on that. So they're in a position to say to the court, well, you may not think we made the right decision, but we relied on all these different doctors. You know, we did everything we could to try to get it right. So our ultimate denial was reasonable, and you have to uphold our decision. Okay, let's Let's back up a second, because when people contact us, they've, in this situation, and assuming they've done all of their appeals already with Lincoln, they're, they're looking to file a lawsuit. It's the only re remaining remedy that's available for them. What's a time frame that a person should expect once a lawsuit is filed? Uh, lawsuits are oh, going to go directly into federal court, and with federal judges, you don't have a lot of say in their calendaring, so it really depends on what the judge wants to do. Sometimes they'll put it on very quick dockets where it may be six to eight months before you have a quote unquote trial date. Sometimes it can be upwards of 18 months. So it can really, really, you know, spread a, a wide gamut. Not to mention if it goes to the final, you know, motions and there's appeals, it can last years. That being said, most courts require mediation uh, during the process of the litigation, which is an opportunity for you to meet with uh, Lincoln's uh, attorneys and Lincoln's representative to try to reach a settlement uh, or some type of resolution. So you can expect that after a lawsuit's filed, at a minimum, 
you know, even getting into mediation or discussions, it's probably gonna take four or five months before things really start moving. What makes it hard with Lincoln claims, because of that two levels of mandatory appeal, you may already be well over a year before, since your claim was denied. So it's drawn out, it's a drawn out process, which I find for people under Lincoln policies, they have to endure it much longer than people who are falling under the Liberty policies. And when a person's determining filing a lawsuit, some people get it and they immediately call a lawyer. Mm -hmm. Other people put it down and don't deal with it for unknown periods of time. But there's a thing known as a statute of limitations. And can you explain what that is and why it's important to take action quickly if your claim has been denied? A statute of limitations is, is a legal you know, term in the sense that you have X amount of time to file a lawsuit. If you don't file it within that time, you're forever barred from doing it. Now, there have been some recent changes uh, into the regulations of ERISA. And Lincoln, I will say more so than most other insurance companies, even if questionably, you know, the claim is before the updates and regulations, in the final denial, they give you the exact date that you have to file the lawsuit for. So before where it was kind of left up to interpretation, now they give you that exact date to do it. Um, but if you miss that date, realistically, there's, there's nothing an attorney could do for you. So if you get that final denial, you really want to act quickly. Not to mention, I mean, you've been going without any type of benefits payment, what's, whatever the case may be. So I'd imagine that you'd want to see about trying to get, you know, to, you know, resolution money somehow. And there's been situations where people have waited to contact attorneys. Social Security gets approved. That's not gonna be part of the case, but Lincoln finds out and all of a sudden they're getting letters, hey, you owe us money. So it's best to act as quick as possible once you get that final denial. Okay, a lot of people who call us, they just wanna get their benefits paid mm -hmm. and they think that if a lawsuit's filed and they win, that they're gonna be on claim forever. Because a lot of people get approved for social security disability, they don't really, they get approved and they don't really get hassled much at all and they kind of once every five years get asked a question. But let's talk about what are the remedies that are available um, if you are to win your Lincoln Financial Disability lawsuit. The most that you can really hope for is a judge finds that you know, you're entitled to benefits, uh, requires that Lincoln reinstates your claim, meaning you're put on claim, uh, and then puts an order for the payment of back benefits. Uh, a judge can't award future benefits. He can't guarantee that they won't deny your case. And then even when it comes to an attorney fee, it's up to the discretion of the court whether or not one, they'll, they'll award and pay anything and then how much they're willing to pay. So a lot of people think, oh, if I win, they're gonna have to do all this. They're gonna have to pay me for, you know, I lost my home, pain and suffering. That doesn't exist. The law only allows you to, uh, to recover unpaid back benefits and then be put back on claim. That's the best. You can be put back on claim and Lincoln can it, theoretically the next day send you updated forms, they want information because they're gonna start reviewing and assessing your case again. And even if they've lost once, it doesn't mean that they won't look to try to deny you again. And at that point, they've already learned from their mistakes. So if they are gonna try to deny you at that point, they're really gonna get all their ducks in a row. Okay. We very often see that with, and, and this is universal, not just to Lincoln, but the vast majority, and I would say greater than 85%, of the claims against Lincoln Financial resolve in a lump sum settlement in litigation. What is this lump sum settlement and, and what does that mean if you accept one? So a lump sum settlement is basically, if, if you know anyone's watched legal shows, they're gonna pay you X amount of money to for you to forfeit your rights under the policy, to dismiss the lawsuit. Um, so you're without coverage. That's done, it's gone, everyone kind of goes their own separate ways. There's gonna be certain provisions like confidentiality provisions that'll protect the company and also protect you, just kind of keep everything you know, between the parties. Uh, so if you accept a lump sum settlement, you're taking money to surrender your coverage uh, and Lincoln will also have in there that they would never insure you again. So if you started working for another company that offered Lincoln, you wouldn't be able to be covered under that specific disability plan. Um, also with that in the lump sum settlement, everyone's legal rights have ended. So some people get worried, well, what if I go back to work? Are they gonna try to say that I committed fraud or something? Once a settlement's been signed, you are free to go back to work, do whatever you may do without fear that they'll come looking you know, for, you know, be paid back the settlement amount. And 
In terms of, uh, obviously everyone wants to know, like how do we charge for these types of cases? Because litigation takes a tremendous amount of time. Uh, legal fees, hourly fees get very expensive. Obviously someone who doesn't have any income isn't gonna pay by the hour for this kind of case. So can you talk about our attorney fee structure and what impact that has on a claimant? Yeah, we only litigate on a contingency fee basis, so there's no money up front. We don't get paid unless we get you paid. Uh, it's a percentage of either the lump sum settlement or if we go all the way to court and you're awarded the back benefits and then going forward we stay your attorney. Um, and then realistically if we do go all the way and a court says we are wrong and you're not entitled to benefits, you owe nothing for our services. So there's no risk to you. Um, you're in a situation where the insurance company is saying you're entitled to zero and even though we can't guarantee an ultimate outcome in court, um, we can tell you certainly that during the process of mediation negotiation, that zero Lincoln's been telling you they're going to pay you is only going to go up. So with a contingency fee arrangement, no risk of being out of pocket any money, you really have nothing to lose in trying to pursue legal action against them. Right. And, and ERISA has a lot of pros, well, a lot of cons. Mm -hmm. but. One of the particular pros is, and the fact that we handle these cases all over the country and have litigated in courts nationwide, is that if you file a lawsuit against Lincoln, you are never going to need to leave your home to appear in court. Mm -hmm. Now that could be a pro because you're saying, I don't want to be bothered by litigation, I don't want to be deposed, I don't want to have to go anywhere, but at the same token, there are no depositions and there is no official day in court where you're going to have to testify. Mm -hmm. So. I think overall that's a disadvantage. The only potential pro is to say, look, my lawyers handle it. If they need something, they'll let me know. But basically no one's going to talk to me and I don't have to do anything, you know, unless the lawyers ask me. So it's basically a totally hands-off process from your perspective as a claimant and absolutely nothing's going to have to be done for you. So you definitely don't want to push this to the side and not do anything, which unfortunately some people do. And you also want to make sure you get the best lawyer possible that you can who has experience in handling these claims and has handled hundreds of these types of long-term disability ERISA governed claims because these are, it's a very specialized area of the law, um, very unique. And if you don't know exactly what you're doing in this area, you will get eaten up by the insurance company. I mean, Lincoln Financial, for example, is a multi-billion dollar company that has a team of lawyers and in-house people that have done thousands of these claims and they do that annually. So please take the time to look around our website, look at our experience in handling these cases. If you're in a position where you have been denied, it's a very easy process just for us to evaluate your claim. And what that involves is go ahead and email us or fax us a copy of your denial letter. We'll also want a copy of your policy We'll immediately set a free initial phone consultation with you. We'll spend as much time as you want on the phone to review your claim. And we're going to let you know at the end of that call whether or not we think we can help you. If we can help you, we're going to tell you immediately what our fees and costs are going to be. Again, there's going to be no charge unless we make a recovery for you. So that part of the process is very simple. Thank you for considering our firm. Steve and I are available at any time to take your phone call or email. And most importantly, you should know that we can help you anywhere in the country, so at your convenience, give us a call.